It's like I remember in assembly once we got shown a video that was like about like gender identity and sexualities and it was just like it was like there were like unicorns like it was like rainbow coloured which yeah pride but there was like unicorns there was like all the this stuff, stuff. And it was the most yeah it was like if you want people to respect it this is not what to show like a group of like 14 15 year olds don't make a mockery out of it yeah, yeah. like I don't think they intended that but I was watching it and I was like, this is genuinely the most awful thing I've ever watched. No one is going to take it seriously. (laughs) So then that probably just made it even worse when they were trying to... The intentions were there, but it was just done so badly. Execution was poor. Yeah. Hi, welcome back to the Got Your Back Chat, a podcast by young people for young people, where we talk about the things we care about. I'm Josh C, and today I'm joined by Declan, Jess and Scarlett, and a special guest, Aaliyah. Hi. If you want to join in the conversation, you can follow us on Instagram by searching at GYB Hull. This month is Pride Month, which is why we've invited Legacy Board member Aaliyah on the podcast to join in the conversation today. Aaliyah has made content for our social media a few times over the year, including a podcast around bi visibility. Welcome, Aaliyah. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) You you had a fun night last night, didn't you? Tell everyone about that. I did have a fun last night. So, not that we're promoting drinking on the podcast, but my my um, society does a thing called well most of them do on campus they have a thing called circling you go and play drinking games basically at a very dodgy bar and we were at said dodgy bar and I met a guy that I well we were circling with the hockey society and I met a guy I didn't like too much um so first of all we dressed him up like a princess to ruin his masculinity um and then he was making fun of my friends so I poured a drink down him um used some choice words and challenged him to a drink off <laughs> and there you go <laughs> who won who won me of course <laughs> <laughs> the misogyny oh. didn't last too long when he got beaten by a girl but anyway lovely it's been a great sure. night so no sleep then <laughs> no sleep no sleep <laughs> you're running on what fumes <laughs> I'm running on literally water and donuts water and donuts no I haven't even All had a baguette get. I want an omelette I really want an omelette right now oh I could go for an omelette so bad Let, let's make a podcast episode where Jess just makes an omelette for the full hour <laughs> I'll record it omelette tutorial I actually when, cook when, guys it's the only thing I can cook when you're allowed to do it in it. person we'll get you to make us all one <laughs> that, oh. that'll be the first episode so I'll put us back on top of them. So, yeah, good idea. <laughs> now I'm hungry. So today we're narrowing things down a bit as pride is such a big, important topic. Uh, we won't have time to cover everything. So today we want to talk about inclusion. In the past few weeks, Instagram has implemented a feature for users to include their pronouns on their profile. What do you guys think? I actually have quite um, a controversial opinion about this because... Don't you think that obviously including pronouns is fantastic and like recognizing and respecting other people's pronouns is great. However, there are some trans people in the closet and like non-binary individuals and like people like that who use different pronouns to what they present. So they either have to out themselves or misgender themselves or not join in, which kind of feels counterproductive i didn't think of it like that that's a fair point like i i didn't i i personally i'm i'm not personally using the feature just i I don't i don't know i just mm, i'm not sure why i just don't almost like don't feel the need to in a sense like if if someone wants to ask me i'll tell them i just don't that I just haven't used it, but I do agree that it's a good idea. But I, I didn't think of it from your point actually earlier of like some people have to literally either out themselves or not join in with something that they should be a part of. It's for them, yeah. That's what something that I've just been considering recently. And obviously that that one negative 
obviously is like the, the positives outweigh that. So yeah, I'm still I'm, yeah. I'm definitely in support and understand that it's very helpful for some people. But just I agree. If people, it's, if people, it's an odd point for everyone, you know, it's not yeah. often considered as like the the people who are using different pronouns who are still in the closet. You know what I mean? If you don't want to have a private Instagram and you want to like, because I don't know if you can have that on, you know, only your friends following see your pronouns. I don't know if that's a thing. Yeah, it is. That's, you can have it so only your followers see it. And that's, and that's yeah. what you'd have to be really picky about how you do your Instagram game, wouldn't you? You'd have to like, yeah, filter everyone who you to- yeah. yeah, and you have to have it on private and make sure that people who you don't want to see it, like for example, parents or family members, someone like that, like That's so true. To avoid. Because I think they instances where my cousin who follows me on Instagram has told my grandma, who's told my mom something that I posted on my story, and it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. Something different. I'm sure it get back to her. Not that I'm like trying to be shady around my own parents, but obviously people in the closet might want to, you know, stay in the closet for their family members. Yeah. If you put it on private, people might, you know, see it and say, oh, haha, they've got they, them pronouns, you know? It's still a taboo thing. And I'm glad that Instagram is making steps to make it more inclusive and more normal to normalizing people like having other pronouns there are downsides to that considering that it's still a taboo topic for quite a bit of the world yeah and even and I think they're almost saying as if right it should be made public like you should be able to make your pronouns public so let's make it a part in the Instagram bio but then to the people who can't don't feel like they can make it public it'll almost make them feel more excluded than they did before to an extent. So, yeah, I think it's a difficult one. Yeah, it's, um, again, it's it's a difficult one for individuals, but yeah, definitely. as a whole, it's still a really good feature. And Yeah. And like you said, some parts of the world are not at that point yet. Like, where, where they're, you know, Western world more so, but some countries are not at that point. So them seeing that in their bio, they'd probably be almost a bit offended maybe do you think at seeing that so although maybe this is the first step to change that that that's very true pronouns on the internet because the internet moves fast we all know that oh it does it does to be able to start online maybe would make the difference for having the rest of the world and the rest of life like it it to be normal to be different I think so. I think especially since Instagram's like one of the most widely used sort of um, social medias, I think yeah. it's probably because yeah. a lot of people see it and then, you know, hopefully it'll mean that more people see it and more people sort of get used to it and think, oh, well, yeah, maybe that is a good idea. Yeah. And it's so public as well. Like if I think with Instagram is it does move kind of with trends and with society Like if you get the big names on Instagram using a pronouns feature, it's going to influence the younger generations. They're going to think, oh, it's normal to put it in my bio so people know. And so it like spreads awareness and then it will just kind of pass through. So everyone's doing it kind of thing. Like like you said, normalize, normalize things like that that wouldn't have been normalized. Even last year, it wasn't really something that was discussed they them pronouns are things that have only just like been a bit more normalized people are still yeah. especially the older generations not to name names and point fingers but quite a few older people don't understand they them pronouns even though you'd use them to describe someone like just a, a person you know what i mean yeah i mean honestly like i um personally have never um like met anyone that has um introduced themselves and said please use they them pronouns um but even even for me obviously if somebody told me that that's their pronouns I would respect and use that um but I think even I would get confused because it's never something it's not all these things are not some things they're not things that we're taught 
by school that's meant to teach us everything we need to know. It's not never something we're taught. We kind of have to gauge where society's heading and be respectful and kind of learn that ourselves. It's easy to like get it wrong. I understand that, but it's also okay to get it wrong as long as you're not doing it maliciously. Yeah, very you know, true. If as like you know the it's it's just um like the intent behind it, I think. If you it's okay to get things wrong in all aspects of life. It's like and people's pronouns are it's a very new topic that I'm sure a lot of people are still getting used to who aren't in the LGBT community, who haven't been exposed to the concept of like changing your pronouns or presenting different to what society would want, you know, like yeah, masculine and using feminine pronouns. Some people just can't get their head around it, but it's okay to get it wrong as long as you don't mean to get it wrong. You know what I mean? Is it just uh, is it just Instagram that's got it though? I know that yeah. Facebook has Facebook has the option to say that your gender is non-binary or I think gender fluid as well, but. I don't know how popular that is and I'm I know that you can make the make your pronouns private but I don't know how well it works. I'm not a face to be honest I'm not a Facebook user and I don't really and I've never I've never had Twitter. I feel like they well, especially Facebook I feel like it's kind of an older generations thing. Don't know. I only got it for university stuff. Sign up for Facebook. It it asks you if you are a man or a woman or other, I think is the option it says. So I think that's why they use pronouns because they made you do it in the first place. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't, I don't think it was as, as conscious a choice as Instagram as well. Although they're obviously owned by the same people. Yeah. I think it reflects who uses it. Honestly, like if Facebook wanted to, they could. And I feel like it's almost, if you're going to get, a, if you want people to use a new feature that's reflective of current society, you're going to put it on somewhere like Instagram where it's the younger people, the younger generation using it. If you want to get it out there quickly and like f- kind of to get the first people to use it. So I have a little cheeky did you know for you all. You ready? Oh, here we go. Did you know? It's now compulsory for UK schools to have LGBTQ inclusive lessons from summer 2020. One, all schools must implement inclusive lessons. In fact, the new guidelines state that all pupils need to understand the importance of equality and respect and that schools must ensure that they comply with the relevant provisions of the Equality Act. How can schools do any better? I have a pretty big opinion on this. I think I've had, we have like focus group at my school and we do, we've done like um, lessons on like LGBT stuff like a million times. And it's really great that we're doing it, but it also, it almost feels a bit patronizing sometimes. Like we'll be shown videos. Like I remember in assembly once we got shown a video that was like about like gender identity and sexualities. And it was just like, it was like, there were like unicorns, like it was like rainbow coloured, which yeah, pride, but there was like unicorns. There was like all the this stuff. And it was stuff. the most, yeah, it was like, if you want people to respect it, this is not what to show like a group don't of like 14, 15 year olds. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think they intended that, but I was watching it and I was like, this is genuinely the most awful thing I've ever watched. No one is going to take it seriously. <laughs> so then that probably just made it even worse when they were trying to... The intentions were there, but it Execution was just was so badly. I mean, yeah. I, I finished school in 2018, so I'm on three years ago now, and throughout year 7 to 11, we did not learn about LGBT at all. Nothing. Um, at my school and it was a it was a, just a regular state school and we learned absolutely nothing about it and the only thing that I had that was even remotely kind of educational based on LGBT was in year 12 on a personal development day one guy came in um, who was gay and he basically talked to us about it wasn't even about his sexuality it was about um 
it basically it was about kind of being who you want to be and being yourself no matter what age that is and he basically spoke about his coming out story and how he was basically told he was kind of convinced he was straight got married had two kids and then realized he was well didn't realize but then came out as as gay um and it's a really moving story but um that was the only thing we ever had. And I wouldn't even say that that was purposely for educational purposes about LGBT. Like, and that's all we had. And bearing in mind, I was, well, I was only three years ago that I finished school and I finished sick form in 2020. And for that entire time, we basically had nothing about it. It's just insane. So my school was the complete opposite to yours, Jess. So we had maybe two weeks where everything was about lgbtq plus so we had uh seminars we had uh, our tutor sessions were all about uh, lgbtq and uh, all the different ty- all the different types of sexualities and stuff and this went on for about two weeks to the point where i think they got on like itv calendar and was on the news because of how inclusive the school was but then that's, that's really good but th- but then the minute it went up on the ITV, it all stopped. Like there was no more seminars. Uh, I don't think anyone gets them anymore. Like in year seven or anything, I don't think anyone gets them anymore. Ah, so they did it. Got so on ITV it just and gave totally up. stopped. Yeah, mm. it was literally just for publicity. I think people need is is yeah. to normalise being, you know, like not cisgender, not straight. Just say it's a normal thing because in some other cultures it is just because we've decided that it's not right to be a woman and not be feminine or be a man and not be masculine or be anything in between. Just because we think it's weird doesn't mean that it's not, you know, it, that it shouldn't be normalised and that it's not like a natural thing because it is. I feel like we kind of touched on this in um, the Sex Education podcast. But LGBT sex ed, like, that's not a thing. That needs to be a thing. Because if you're sat in a classroom with 30 people, there's going to be at least a few that are going to experiment with the same gender or someone who's transgender or... Do you know what I mean? Like, and they're not learning about it. Yeah, I, I that's a very good point, actually, because I, I don't know about you guys. I wasn't in the sex ed podcast, but... I my sex ed was rubbish there was barely anything there so and that was for obviously straight people or cisgender people as well like there's so there's absolutely nothing for anyone else yeah I don't even get a sex ed at school stay safe. exactly how do you expect people to stay safe and not get pregnant or not spread STIs or anything like that if you're not teaching them well that that's something like the, my, my, my old school's gotten better at which is good. They, schools should get better at it because all schools are rubbish at it in general. But there is absolutely nothing to be inclusive. Like, you learn boy, girl, dick, vagina, and that's it. Like, and there's so many other variations. Well, it's it's true. Oh, God, Scientific. don't call that. That is not the name of this podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the wrong, wrong name, wrong title. When we had, like, our little primary school, like... We had like a little one in primary school. Yeah. (laughs) Where we had like a nurse come in and and it was the cringiest thing ever. But it wasn't even fully about sex. Yeah. But they split us all off for that and all the boys had to go outside for that. And then all the boys came back in for their bit and all the girls went outside. Yeah, I think everyone should learn everything so that everyone's kind of, you all know everything. I didn't learn properly about periods and stuff to like uh, science when we had to go through the menstrual cycle. And that was I it. literally, I taught my flatmate what the pill was like three weeks ago. That's how ridiculous it was. He had I didn't, no I didn't even mean to talk that. Oh my gosh. But the only, especially in sex ed, there's the only contraception ever is just like, oh, there's a condom and there's a pill, but there's a condom and that's it. There's nothing for like, they don't mention anything for protecting against STIs for like lesbians or bisexual people, or like people who, you know, aren't, there, there isn't a penis involved. So a condom isn't an option, that type of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's very like, true. It's, 
It's completely taboo to to have protective sex if you are not straight. But even even things like I was just I was just thinking about schools and things in schools that would be frustrating in an inclusivity setting. Even in the test set, like the sense of if you're drawing girls and boys in a cup, like in a classroom, and you say draw a girl and a boy, or if you're using an animation, you know the girl doesn't always have to have a dress on, the boy doesn't always have to be in blue, that kind of thing. Even things like that, normalizing that the girl could have trousers on and wear a blue top, and the boy could have a pink top on. Like, God forbid a boy's wearing pink. Even things like that now. Like, if you're watching an animation in primary school, if you ask a ask a five-year-old child, six-year-old child to draw a boy, she's going to draw him with a top and jeans on. If you ask, him, ask the same person to draw a girl, it'll be a pink dress or something like that. Even just breaking those norms from a young age then will increase the inclusivity as they grow older, and it'll stop like younger people having the same like ideals in their head of what a man and a woman should look like or do look like in quotation marks. Um, and then they won't have that as they grow older. And then there won't be that stereotype and the need to kind of, you know, say that you're not in the norms. Gender neutral bathrooms. That's what should be normalised. I think um, it's my. I, I think that I think they're a good idea, and we should have them because obviously, you know, someone who doesn't identify as a girl or a boy doesn't want to be going into a girl or a boy's bathroom. But I do think, like, I never. I was always really pro um, gender neutral bathrooms, and I still am. But I think the toilets in um, the new uh, golf place that opened in St. Stephen's, I'm pretty sure they only have strictly gender neutral toilets, which is good on an inclusivity front, but I'm going to be entirely honest. I was like stood there washing my hands and I was like, if like a man, like a 40 year old man comes in, it's going to make me uncomfortable. So I think it, there needs to be options for gender neutral people. But I also think that there should be people who still want to use gendered bathrooms should still have the option too. Yeah, I know. But um, like the thing there's, there's, I feel like I, I do agree with Scarlett to a point, like I don't mind using a gen, like a gender neutral bathroom, but like, it depends on where I am. Like if I'm in a nightclub, or if I'm like on my, if I was on my period, right, going really, really like thingy here. But if I was on my period, I don't want a guy in the stall next to me. That would make me feel very uncomfortable, I think. I think a comfort like, thing is, is the main point because some women feel unsafe, like in such a vulnerable position you know like yeah. using the bathroom when a man's there and obviously men will feel vulnerable for the same same reasons if a woman's there as yeah, well, very true. i think that gender neutral bathroom should be an option definitely but i, I agree also an option not, not everything yeah i completely yeah. agree <laughs> we could talk forever about random stuff i miss you alia it's been too long just a quick this is just a quick a quick declaration of my love for Aaliyah because <laughs> we used to we used to do these chats we used to do these chats over dominoes in the in the little meeting room literally like nearly two years ago now we would do it that feels like it was ages ago and then they used to just stick a mic there and record it did we even get one in last year no we, we didn't, didn't. Like normal meeting like before lockdown no, I have. I, I don't think, think I have, have met, met you, Josh. Actually, actually. I don't know you once. Me, me and yeah. the other Josh have met. It's Declan yeah. and Scarlett. I've never. Well, yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a voice. <laughs> no, there used to be like no. There used to be no boys on the board. Like now, it's kind of even. But there was at one point there was like five or six. Yeah, there was. There was me. There was me and all oh, all God. the girls, and I just sat. I just used to sit there eating pizza and being quiet. <laughs> I did. You did. And, and you now you silent. hate me. Well, just to put this in context, so we're not just randomly talking about dominoes. Basically, um, as a Got Your Back board, we have, or we used to have monthly board meetings in person, they're now on Zoom. Um, so, Aaliyah, Josh. I mean, pizza. <laughs> yeah, Aaliyah, Josh, and I um, have been to the board meetings. I don't think Scarlett or Declan, you've never been in person, have you? I don't think. No. 
<laughs> I guess that's it for this week. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks everyone for joining us, uh, especially to Aaliyah. Thank you for coming. Uh, if you want to support the podcast, you can share our Spotify or YouTube links and follow us on Instagram at GYB Hull. And if no one else has anything to say, bye everyone. <laughs> Bye. (laughs) Bye. Got Your Back Chat is a podcast made by Got Your Back, a media made by young people for young people. Got Your Back Chat is managed by Eskimo Soup for the Got Your Back campaign. Alice O'Dwyer is our campaign lead. Jenny Harrison is our producer. Keely Graham is our designer. And Peyton Hutchinson made the jingle. You can follow Got Your Back on social media by searching at GYB Hull. And make sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to hear more in the future.